we've got Gordon's notes back there too, if you want to steal them. <laughs> Just <laughs> left them on.
Hello and welcome once more to Sydney Harbour for the third heat of the New South Wales 18-foot skiff championship. I'm Peter Shipway and along with Andrew Buckland and Jimmy Bury, on behalf of Sail Media, we'll be bringing this uh, third heat to you. And it's the first Sunday of summer, but it's far from a summer's day, that's for sure. But there's good breeze and reasonable breeze. We're set up on the southeasterly course and... Uh, if the previous two heats have been any indication, we're in for another thrilling day of racing. Uh, last week we saw a fantastic 18-foot skiff race, and uh, all year it's, it's been very exciting, and uh, plenty of thrills and spills and the results right in doubt, almost to the final finishing line. So, as I say, good afternoon to Andrew Buckland. Andrew, the weather looks a bit tricky. Yeah, Pete, uh, thanks. It's um, you know, the weather system dominated by in a very macro scale now, the La Nina event, which uh, brings warmer water temperatures and generally more onshore type breeze to the east coast of Australia. Middle of the high pressure cell, well to the south of Sydney, directing const reasonably consistent southeasterly flow. Quite cool, as you mentioned, about 19. Water temperature measured here at 19, but pretty hot water offshore, so it gives rise to rain cells and a few things. But we would expect to see wind basically holding, maybe fading a little, and uh, perhaps the range for the day across the racetrack, 10 to 18, but but uh, predominantly towards the bottom of that. So I guess a bit of a decision to be made in the park of which rig, one or two, what were most people going for, did you feel? Well, the... the Popular opinion in the park, epitomised by Marcus Ashley Jones, the 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 the, uh, the captain of uh, the Lazarus Capital Partners. If you don't put bigger in big rig in today, you should be banned for life from 18 foot or something. So, <laughs> but there's a couple of likes for the excuses. I think. We're going to have a smaller fleet now, aren't we? That's yes, that's right. That'll. It's a pretty, pretty big statement, but let's see. No, let's go. But a couple of boats, I understand, have. And the SAR registration date for the class, where they try and restrict to some degree the number of new sales you can get, that the exit gate closed on that, and some of the boats haven't got new sales that were supposed to have been delivered. So I think, as an example, uh, Tech 2, one of the favourites perhaps, has got the second rig in, but not from voluntary choice. And they tried to, them and I think another boat tried to get an exemption for today, but, but um, not granted. And Jimmy Bury just pointing to Yandu. Well, I think and they've got a second rig as well. They yeah, were thinking yeah, about it. They look, yeah. as we see them coming out of Double Bay in the distance, I think it looks very much like a second rig. But yeah. as we say to Jimmy Bury, good afternoon. Jimmy, the course, the South Eastley, just talk us through that, please. G'day, Pete. G'day, Bucko. Yeah, today we're on the South East, so slightly different from what we've had for the past three weeks. So where we are is just to the north of Bradley's Head. It's where the start is in Taylor's Bay, and we go over to Rose Bay. From Rose Bay down, all the way down to Robertson Point, Kirribilli sort of area, and then back to Clark Island, down to Chowder Bay, which is the next bay north of us. Then up into Rose Bay, back down to where the start area is, back into Rose Bay, all the way down to Kirribilli at Robertson Point, then we finish off Clark Island. And I think the breeze, looking at it, a little spike at the moment, but yeah. I think very comfortable. So, Pete, probably a bit of a long day for the sheet hands, the potential of some two-star reaching. Yes. Plus, yeah, the first lap's a big figure of eight, and uh, the angles, as we know, can be tricky. And then just one little VMG run, the little short up and down between, not short, but but uh, Rose Bay and, uh, and uh, the point here down at the corner of Chowder. So we're about ten minutes away from the start. You just see the fleet just leaving Double Bay, coming out under Spinnaker. Still a few stragglers still just getting off the beach. But uh, we'll just, while we're waiting for the start, just look at the previous two heats. And as I said earlier, some very, very exciting and thrilling racing. And uh, we look at the point score, and there it is. Noakes Sailing is leading with a first and a second. They've got three points. Yandu is second on five points, then Tech two. A five and a one. They were very impressive last week and uh, the previous week. In the first heat, they suffered a bit of rig damage. 
coming to the finish when they were in second place and challenging for the lead. So those three, I think Andrew would be fair to say, have been the standout performers this season so far. Yeah, and the good part of that, I think, as we've noted, is Noakes, Noakes sailing, Ed Parry's, Josh Perebski and Sean Langman steadily improving and with a new boat to come. So they've joined the top ranks of the fleet and that's great to see uh, improvement. And I guess if we look through the rest of the fleet, there's some crew changes. Um, there's some substitutes where guys have been injured, um, et cetera, et cetera. But I think it, Noakes Sailing might start today as favourite for this race. OK, well, on screen, Fisher Pikel, new skipper in John O'Witty at the helm today. And um, one of the most interesting crew changes, the whole boat has changed, is Smeg. <laughs> now, they suffered a bit of a misadventure last week when uh, forward hand Ricky Bridge severely injured his ankle and um, he's unavailable. So, Andrew, talk us through the crew on Smeg today. And, of course, Michael Cox and the skipper, he's out, has really been out since the first race when he broke his toes. So, um, it's been a... Bad year thus Bad year. far for ankles and toes and feet and you know, in your own end foot of trapezing on the end of the rack. Have they changed the foot straps or anything, Bucker? Have you noticed? Or because that I know we went through a period of that many yeah. years ago where they went to these new wetsuit grip ones. Yeah. And you you'd nose dive and your foot would stay there and your body would try and go around the force too. Yeah, so they're now step out of jobs, you know, a bit like the thong, it'll come off. Yeah. Yeah. So, Pete, on the SMEG, Dave Gilmore, well-known ex-49er sailor and a fair bit of 18 footer experience. But on the main sheet, Leonard Takahashi, Japanese 49er and GP sailor, and Mike McKenzie, the former colleague of... Um, of uh, Ricky Bridge and Lee Napton. Ricky Bridge and Lee Napton and Gilton winner with Napo. So, pretty good lineup. but as ever, the three-man combo... Start from square one today. Yeah. So big, big job there, but um, plenty of skill, but they'd, be, they'd do well to get round in the top fives, you would think. Well, the top three, which is Yandu and uh, Tech 2 and Noakes, have all got the same crew throughout. Yeah, so Charlie Wyatt back in on the main sheet on the, on the Tech 2. And their, you know, go-to substitute, Lou Parkinson. So, Charlie, one of the key guys on the mighty info track and uh, paid accordingly. But, uh, and I talked to the, both those boys through the week sort of a bit and uh, to discover that whilst they look similar, Charlie's about 10 kilos heavier than, than, uh, than Luke. But... Uh, OK, well... We're on Noakes Youth there, as we say each week, not to be confused with Vintech. It is Vintech on the sale, but it is the Noakes Youth crew. And we're just over in, um, in Taylor Bay, waiting for signals to start in this third heat of the 18-footers. And all the fleet seem to have departed successfully Double Bay. A few of them are still a few minutes away from the starting line, but... That's the scene as we look upwind from Taylor Bay in towards Rose Bay, where the first mark will be. Shark Island there with a white uh, lighthouse to the left. There's the Rag and Famish Hotel. And there are signals, signals. Five minute signals. Are they all going to make it? I think they probably will. Just about. Yeah. So what's the if breeze, you, Andrew? If Talk you just us have through a look at that picture on screen, you can see yeah. Harry Price with his busted wing That's behind right. Larry. Yeah, yeah. So he'll be out for quite a few weeks. So yeah, the no, I, might be a permanent step in there. I had no, I had a chat with Harry. He reckons a couple of weeks, mate, she'll be right. So the young people, mate. That's what happens. That's quick right. recovery. That's right. So that means, in effect, that he probably won't be back before Christmas, but but not too far away. Yeah, so Ash Rookland stepping back in on the wood of Rack and Famish. Um, Simon, Simon Nern back on the stick of uh, Burrowing Young Henrys. John O'Whitty is mentioned by Pete on Fisher and Pykel. Um, Massimiliano Fonzo on the main sheet of Ilvi with Nick Daly and Johnny Walton. And John Cooley on the main sheet of the Oak Double Bay Four Pines. Not entirely new, but newish. And not racing today. Noakes Blue, lack of personnel, and Andu. Because. Okay, well, we're 
under four minutes, and we're uh, got a breeze, a few little spiky bits in it, Andrew, as we look upwind. Um, but I think generally you'd have to say a big sail breeze. Yeah, Pete, as I said, I think one minute out of ten you'll be a bit flappy with the big sail. Yep. The other nine you'll be going, enjoy, leaning back and enjoying it, mate. You know how it works. It's, uh, and it is, I mean, it is spiky and... and, and you know, the peak puff we might see today might be 16 perhaps for a minute, but that's about it. And what uh, what do we look like on the starting line, Andrew? It's a fairly longish line, but I'll give everyone plenty of room to get yeah. their ends. Or Good. Nice, li nice little flood tide. Line looks long enough. History says get, get left, but not too far left. And the problem being that if you come left off the line, you've got to figure out a lane to tack in within about two minutes, maybe a little bit more. But historically, coming right back towards the shore doesn't work. And the shore here, I don't know why, but just from the topography, you get the breeze lifting off the water, not far to leeward of the bottom mark or the start line, as the case may be. And so you get bogged down in no air. So first job, get out to the channel and then have a think. I think. Second job, which side of the island? Oh, don't ask me that question. OK, I'll ask Jimmy. Jimmy, which side of the island? I'm liking the left Shibo, I think. is looks Looking up the course, looks like there's a bit more breeze there currently. Um, then, yeah, but... Shibo, which side would you go? The opposite to you. There you go. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's an old joke and not a very good one, all right? Well, <laughs> you asked, you set it up. You'll have to think of a new one, mate, a new answer. All right. OK, well, let's... Back to the race course. Two minutes as we speak. Two minutes. Yeah. And the fleet will just make it, I think. The Burrowang Hotel will be last to greet the starter. Oh, no, that's uh, up high Balmain Slake. They'll be just make it, perhaps. Yeah. Late coming out. Yeah. Tech 2 was a bit late under his second Sorry. rig. But Sorry, folks. Yeah. No, no Blue is here. We don't have a name for the... What do we? We don't have a name for the bowman. Nokes Blue is oh. in attendance, which yeah, is good. Yeah, Yvette's there. Yvette Yvette's Heritage. Found someone. So the two sort of favourites here, Tech 2 and uh, Nokes Sailing, both on time. Kitchen Maker also on the improvement curve. Lachlan Steel, Jerome Watson, Matty Doyle. Um, sorry, is it correct for today? Yes, it is. But... And the rest of the fleet a little bit in danger of being in arrears, one yes, might say. just coming up to one minute. There's one, one minute. One minute. Um, Balmain <coughs> are going to be late, I think. Burrowang will just make it. Yeah, Burrowang anyway, will be at, at the committee boat yeah. as the gun goes. Okay, well, here we are. They're starting to stack up now. Smeg's down the port end as usual. Thanks, Chits. No, he's over the lines. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what Smeg's doing. He's way up wind of the starting line. He's trying to bear away, Peter. He's That's trying to get away. Bear. Well, he's going to miss the start, I think it'd be fair to say. Right down at the pin, we've got someone right down. Appliances oh, online. Appliance online. Is appliance online. OK, yeah. Noakes is getting down towards the pin. He's going to have a nice clear runway down there, Noakes. When won't be one of the form boats of the year. Ten Come, seconds. Ten no seconds. Smeg will miss the start. Balmain will miss the start badly. Tech, okay. So will Rag and Famish and 18 footers, Pete. Yeah, Tech 2 conservative at this end, but okay. good. Okay. okay, we're away. It's a clean start, I would say, from that. So, but as we said, Pete, it looks a lot left the wind. Tech 2 and no, Yandu with second sail on. The rest of the fleet, I think, with big sail. Yeah. Well, Yandu likes to go right in this course. I know that from yeah. history. So we'll see how it powers out with his. Uh, you'll have to power his little rig up because at the moment it's probably a big rig to sail. Yeah. And he's found, though, a good path at least. Yeah. Appliances online started on port, crossed the majority of the fleet, and Noakes just tacking now. He was the most favoured down at the pin end, and he looks to have a nice little jump at this early stage. The breeze quite in the left. And a beautiful tack from Noakes. And not so good from Noakes. Blue below them. They were a bit squirrely. But this is the third heat of the state championships for the 18s. The race just underway in a south easterly breeze of anything between ooh, 8 to 12 to 14, maybe up to 16 at the most. But it's the team of 
Sean Langman on the notes, leading the way off the start line. So they're coming up into Rose Bay. I think they might have said good, good night, good night to the fleet. Tech two, a little bit buried with his second rig. Yeah. And coming back across on starboard as appliances online. Who, who, who led them? Who led them out of the out of the pin on board? But today, sponsor appliances online as well. Okay, our good showing, boys. They did well. They've come back, Alex Marinelli, Darcy McCracken, and Hamish Vass. Nice job. So they're the two Noakes boat. Noakes, short language is going off screen. There he's back on screen, and. Uh, A good bit of yacht racing here, though. The Shore Partners back into the race from being a little bit, a little bit out of it. Tech two hanging wow. in there with the second rig. Yeah, but gee, no sailing looks pretty powerful at the moment. But but when you can lean back, it's a nice day out, right? Yeah. You're with me, aren't you? There he is, and there's Tech two to the right. The red and blue, uh, white insignia on his mainsail. Ahead of him is a 12-foot skiff. So don't worry about him. And just back a little bit is the uh, so Lazarus. If we can get a good shot of the Tech 2's rig, they've had some love curve work done through the week, I hear. Yeah, it looks okay. He's starting to power away okay, Tech 2. He's got good speed. He'll be very close to the lead. Yandu's still going hard right, but there's Tech 2. And a big keelboat, just going to give yeah. a bit of a stitch up here. Yeah, no limit, a Sydney Hobart contender. Going to make life a bit difficult for Tech 2. And Noakes, Noakes is doing a big bear away. Oh, yeah. Oh, are they? No, they're good. Thanks Tech very two. much. Thanks for nothing. Wow. Okay, now goes. it looks like a... Problematic one, wasn't it, Jimmy? I'll tell you who's going to be seriously. leading here, boys and girls. It's Yandu, the mighty Yandu leads. How about that? Little rig came off the start line, tacked quickly, got onto onto port, did a long port. Now he's consolidating and he will cross the fleet. There he is, John winning. The old fella's done it again. He's showing exceptional speed this year with his a new boat, new rig set up. He likes the second rig. He's on second rig at the moment. He's a clear leader, Andrew, here. Yeah, yeah, and plenty he, of pressure on this right hand side compared to the left side before the start bucket. He, yeah, it's nothing up, over there. He's going to the right hand side of the island. There he goes. Tax. I told you that was the way to go, Andrew. For all the fleet are going. <laughs> you were going left. Where were you, Jimmy? You were out the I left. I was too. on the left yeah, because that's yeah. where the breeze was when we started. <laughs> Shepherds, yeah, you blokes, you'll never listen to me. Shepherds, listen, we, we, we're going to buy a new retrospective <laughs> scarf for you, mate. It's all right. Uh, no, it's just close though, aren't they? You've got to look yes. at that. Yeah. Well, there's another good race. There's the three again. Yeah. Yandu, Noakes, and Tech 2. There's Yandu above Tech 2. That's the gap. Good spiky breeze between Shark Island and Point Piper as we're looking at the fleet. And a few boats going to the left of the island, but this is the leading group here. They're all going to the right, looking upwind. Yeah, well, two of the three boats have got second rigs in. It's sort of a grey Sydney afternoon. The bigger uh, advantage will be when they're going downhill, obviously. Yeah. The, uh, the big rigs. Yeah, that's right. So a bit unusual, Pete, the weather, isn't it? Like, it's quite it, pretty rare that in Sydney we're not in the mid-20s, you know, once it's de de December day, you know. Yeah. For the Fahrenheit people, 20 C is 68 F. And we had about that. Yep. Divide, yeah, divide by five, yeah. multiply by nine, and that's 32. Bucko, there you go. How's that? Yeah. I've, got a, I've got a spreadsheet for <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We'll get it. That's your mathematics lesson for the day. But there's the three leaders all going on port in the point pipe of Yandu, just tacking, and quite good breeze here at Point Piper. So, nice little drag race getting set up over there. Noakes on the lee bow Tech 2. Tech 2 with second rig in. And this will be a good test for them because they had been trying to improve the low range speed with the second rig. Uh, so, uh, 
I wonder what uh, Marcus Ashley Jones is saying now if he says anyone that had a second rig in what shouldn't ever sail again. <laughs> so, at their first and second. Anyway, good on him. Well, Pete, you know, a side of this event uh, and in common with a lot of the fleet, they all did the Cabbage Island race Friday night, Saturday morning, so they've got a good calendar of yachting for the weekend, haven't they? Yeah. And, and on Marcus's boat, URM, funded by URM, like 15 of the boys from the park, more or less, and girls, navigating event heritage, the entire crew of Finport, now, it's great, uh, isn't it, that they're out, all out there ocean racing? Lazarus Capital Partners and most of the crew of Andu as well. So. And you two blokes were out doing that race as well. Yeah, but we weren't quite so high, high profile. Ship was reliving the 1970s. <laughs> on the Love and More, the mighty s, s yacht owned by the Kurtz family. And I accused Ship of setting a blooper running to the island, but he denied it, so there you go. <laughs> can't, can't give away too many secrets. But anyway... There's a, a bloke that sailed on Love and War, John Winning, a number of times to Hobart, enjoying the lead now in the uh, third heat of the state championship for the 18s on a grey old Sydney afternoon, but good breeze, southeasterly, pairing up and down between, you know, anywhere between 10 and 16 knots, perhaps. Yeah. Pete, Woody enjoying the lead and pinching himself. Well, it's terrific, isn't it? You know? Yeah, no, it is. It is terrific. But his age and experience will still be up there. He'd be also thanking God that, that God sent him uh, Feng Warren to pull the main sheet. <laughs> Don't you think? Well, he's yeah. doing a pretty good job now. Yeah. The three of them are. Yeah. No, no, it's terrific. Mike Kennedy in the bow, Feng Warren on the sheet, and. So you just a John, little down pressure now, so you can see there. John oh, pro not winning, yet. approaching the. Bit of a weather mark, he's a bit of a skinny low line, quite feet. tight. Yes, did you help him with that at all? No, so he'll make it easy. Oh, no worries. He's, he's, jib, he's jib in a moment up inside the jib with him. Yeah. Perfect, <laughs> nice lead, too. He's got it really, he's opened up. It is good, isn't it? Here he goes. So it's going he'll through lead. the water beautifully. He'll lead by a good 20 or 30 seconds or yeah. more. There he goes. Yeah. Oh, hang on to him, boys. Good little puff to get uh, down on. A, a good puff to get down on. Straight into the spinnaker, no thinking about it. And well, Tech, Tech Two's going to be second with second rig in, so that's <laughs> interesting also, isn't it? He will be second. And Marcus of the aforesaid comments will be fifth, I think. So all the boats went up the right-hand side of uh, Shark Island. All, all, the, all, leading the, leaders, all yeah, the leaders. All the leading group, yep. Yeah. And Shore and Partners lead, I think, the group that went... Up the okay, side. Tech 2 trying to get away. Well overcooked here. There he goes, Jack McCartney. His crew of Charlie White and Lewis Brake, they're away. Chasing hard on Yandu. And then Noakes will be next. Well overstood, roaring in, and Lazarus behind them. So Noakes group probably not all that accurate up that beat, in fact. But still. They're around. Big sail, I'll be fancying the chances on the run. Yeah, Quite a well, long run down to Robertson's Point. And so. here comes Marcus. With the, with the jib still in the, the cleat, big, Pete. Big, big sail. Whoa, Ooh. get her away. Good job. They're fourth. Sure, partners will be sneaking here. We hope Fisher and Pike will get the bear away fifth. done, folks. Oh. A little of an action here. John O'Witty on Fisher Pike. Get her away. Whoa. Uh, that Down they go. Oh. Down the mine, hang into it. I'm no, sort of gone. trunked where we are because we've got the Optimus just gone. started right behind us. Oh, gee. Oh, there's some action here. Not good action. Kitchen maker threading the needle between power what a, boats what and a spot for Optimus. them to set up a start line. Fisher Pike will survive all that somehow. They're <laughs> away. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Burrowang Hotel got through there. Wow, that was all happening. Yeah. A bit of abuse, but here goes Lazarus <laughs> Capital Developments, then Smeg, who'd missed the start. Let's see how they can recover. Are they on a small rig too, I think, yeah, Andrew, no, aren't they? they? You're quite yeah. right, Pete. Royal Oak Round, then Noakes Blue, and then Appliances Online, Racing Hard, trying to get the bow down. 
which is always difficult in squally conditions. The chase is on, the long run down the harbour now, and Yandu leads. So for the viewers, Sydney Harbour, despite the fact that it's uh, one of those grey days, still a lot of boats and a fair bit of pressure on the water area, shall we say. There's Smeg, David Gilmore at the helm this week from a famous yachting family. The Gilmores. Mike McKenzie in the bow, back in the position he was crewed for Lee Napton when they won the JJs back in 2016, I think it was. And uh, the injured Ricky Bridge was aboard that year as well. But anyway, there's the Burrowang Hotel. They're about sixth or seventh. Simon Nern. Back on speed. Here we go. Speed bouncing away with a shivery looking spinning aloft. Not quite right, but no. <laughs> VMG run, Pete, so almost one third of the time probably on starboard jive here. Bishop Michael did well to survive in the weather mark. They were all but capsized, but they're up and going. John O'Witty at the helm this week. Yeah, we had nowhere to go at that top mark, Peter. No. Opti starting behind us and all the spectator boats. So no, you did a good job, Jimmy. We uh, got, out of, got out of jail with that one. Sure, and partners the fore foreground. Cross coming up further down the track between Noakes and Tech 2. So Noakes a small gain, Tech 2 still in front, second rig. Meanwhile, Yandu keeps on keeping on, way in the distance, you'll see him, there he is. He will lead clearly at this uh, second turning mark. And another long beat. Lanzos has got up to up to fourth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, she, yes, he she was fourth. fourth, I think, yeah, at, no, you're, at the mark. You're right, I was confused. So what's that tell you about at this early stage of the race with Tech 2 and Yandu sailing with the second rigs and probably a big sail breeze, Andrew? Well, it tells you about the ability to adapt downrange. And Woody's got a different configuration. He's got a slightly lower aspect and larger headsail, which he's got confidence in. Well, here's the bot fight for second place. Notes on starboard, but Tech 2 will cross ahead. Easy cross there for Tech 2 in a nice little puff. But also, you know, the puffs come with little cloud streets. And we're in a puff phase at the moment, so... Typically what we see happen is some light air down the bottom of the run on the other side of the course. Where the little rig guys suffer, but later in the day, perhaps. There's both Noakes and Tech 2. Noakes with the bigger rig, you can see that quite clearly on screen there. They're both in a good puff trying to get down to the mark at Robertson Point. Well, Yandu very conservative drop, but meanwhile we're on the fight for second. Tech 2 and Noakes. Good early drop on the leader, Yandu. We'll see him shortly go around the mark at Robertson Point, and then they go up to Clark Island. Okay, there's Yandu, he's around. To get the clock running, Andrew. It's clock be a on. nice lead here, looking back. They've got a couple more jibes in, these two. Boats, Tech 2 and Noakes. So they've made life hard for each other a bit there, Pete. The typical two versus three. Let's get in each other's way a bit. 
didn't need two extra drives really. No, but that more advantage to Yandu in time. Yeah, it's going to so, be going to be nearly oh, one, minute, one minute. Here we go. Noakes on starboard, and Noakes might try the inside try inside yep. road to glory. And he's outside the three boat lengths. Bit of work to do from both crews here, but Tech Two will get round the front of them, and they will be second. Skating around the bow. The lead, lead is what Andrew. Now 50 seconds. 50 seconds. Terrific lead to Yandu. Yep. Tech Two second. Noakes third and fourth. Quite in contact is the Lazarus. And the breeze just down a little now on this side of the track. As it well. is, yep. Yeah. So maybe the big sails will come into play. So, and you'll, you'll see Noakes here surely tack, but maybe not. They're going to just foot through the lee of Tech Two. Tech Two only just got three strings and just. Yeah. It'll be a tough job now with the second rig, but meanwhile, Yandu holds a very commanding lead. Lazarus, uh, uh, Capital Partners, Marcus Ashley Jones, Cam Gundy, and Kieran Cowan sailing today place of Geronimo Harrison. They're in fourth. And then Shore and Partners probably having their best hit out of the season. And they so. didn't get out of the box or go up the beat first beat too well, so they've done okay down the run. And yep. They're in touch with the leading yep. group at least. Steve but, Thomas, yeah. Lindsay Stead and Sean Connor. They're around. So Lindsay also a um, ocean racing participant. He's the boat captain for Dave Griffith's 66-foot uh, whisper. Bishop Pikel coming in, and just in front of them will be the Burrowang. She's around next. Bishop Pikel just jiving and the hot on her heels will be the kitchen maker. <coughs> the return of Simon Noon to the Burrowang Young Henry yeah. boat. Yeah, they're, they're in the mix. No? Well, it's quite light looking up wind towards Clark Island, Andrew. No. It's going to be very soft up near the island, you would think. Yeah, so might be advantage a little bit back to the big rig guys. But... And it wasn't, you know, it was sort of on the windy side of the spectrum on the first beat, but, but um, just look up wind, Pete. How many grey clouds we got? Plenty. Yep. But not low. There's another band here, but... Uh... OK, here's the Royal Oak Four Pines just going around. Aaron Everett, John Cooley and Charlie Gandhi. So they'd be disappointed in their first lap. Yeah. Well, the got first the... half of the first lap anyway. Yeah, nice and tidy. And then the Smeg. Dropped back a little there on that run. I don't quite know what happened, but anyway, it's a... Oh, they're approaching it fairly conservatively. Yes, as they you, are. As you'd expect. But, um, or oh, Spinnaker in the water and just got rescued. Yeah, so definitely big sail on this side of the track up the beat, at least. Be interesting to see. Yep. There's the Balmain Slake with the orange Spinnaker. Balmain Slate, Cardinal Sin, Mr. Start, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's not always a good recipe. And the Birkenhead Point Marina, Tim Westwood, Alex Chitterton and George Richardson today in the bow. Just running down to the Tony Mark and Robertson Point and the majority of the fleet up into Double Bay. There's Balmain Slate Jivey inside Birkenhead. And they're the leaders. Yandu leads. Tech 2 and Noakes are the three with Lazarus Capital Partners in fourth spot. And the breeze is up and down in the south-easterly direction. Yeah. And a little yeah, nice soft here. Bit of puff coming. Another good line of breeze coming. Ferry coming from Manly gonna hurt these guys better than the breeze at fairway left Pete looking at tech two. He's sailing back towards yep. the headland a bit. High right on the right, tech two with no. Oh wind yeah, at all. tech two's just run out of it. You can see just to the left of Lazarus. You know, real downer down in pressure and down in direction. Just got to wait for it to come back. And a big bit of left-hander coming. No group on the face of it, so... Lazarus storming up up to him. You'll see Noakes come into play. There she is. A crossing Tech 2 yep. quite comfortably. Yeah. So Noakes up good... to second with the big sail on the face of a... 
huge left-hander. Meanwhile, Yandu keeps on keeping on. He's ex held that lead for sure. Yeah. And there's the Sydney Harbour Ferry just going to pass to Lewin of Tech 2. And also Lazarus got a man in looking for pressure on Lazarus. That was that soft spot that Tech 2 went through, I think, Andrew. See Tech 2 powered up now. Oh, there's a real squirrely spot. And both boats now going back, yeah? Yeah. And the boat that also has done well, the other side of the ferry, you'll see him pop out in a minute, is Shore and Partners. One, two, three. Where's he gone? Oh, he's in front of the ferry. There he is. Well clear. He's, he's put himself right into the, the mix here. He is smoking, sure, and partners. Yeah, a little, a little duck to get around the back yeah. of Tech Two. Well, he so went left early out off the the weather mark, the, the leeward mark. So he's up to four. As suggested by you, Pete. Yeah, as always. With the records and speed to scope only, mate. It's okay. A lot of choppy water here from ferries and powerboats. So the left has paid big yeah. time. Sure, and partners will be in second spot. He yep. crossed both Tech Two and Noakes for a minute. <clears throat> yep. Watch this space. A good left hander here. But we're on shore and partners. Wow, it's uh, very strange days indeed, isn't it, Pete? You know, as we look here, we're travelling with shore and partners, they're in perhaps 10 knots of wind. Over here with Tech 2 and no scrupy close proximity. Just coming out of a 14 knot, 14 knot puff on notes. See, so way in the distance at the stern of the ferry, that is Yandu. That gives you some idea of the lead he's got. He's protected it very well up this beat. Now, Pete, the next leg is probably going to be a two sail reach. Yeah. No spinnaker, the breeze has gone left far enough. The challenging sail and advantage back to the big, big, big rigs, rigs, yeah. Big rig boats. There's Elby coming down in the background after missing the start. Yeah, she missed it big time. Broke its rig last week, the second rig, so she had no choice this week to go with a big rig. There's Elby with a black spinnaker, but this is the battle for second. Shore and Partners at the moment, and Noakes sailing. And Tech 2 struggling just a little, I think you'd have to say, with that second rig, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, there's the, the hottest part of the contest all year has been the two red boats, Tech 2 and... Uh, Noakes. So Noakes even not at full pressure with on occasion there with Big Rick. So, but easier to sail a boat overpowered than underpowered for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yandu has just rounded the weather mark but of he, camera at the moment. He's just fast through the water, isn't he, Pete? Wow, he certainly is upwind, well, and downwind, you'd have to say, but upwind, amazingly so, which is fantastic for him and the crew. He's John not gonna, winning. He's not going to set. No, he'll, he'll need a bit of pressure if he's not going to set with that small rig, but his lead is so, it's a well, well over a minute, this lead, so he's extended up the beat. Yeah, there he mate, goes, mate 12 foot it, skiff in the foreground. Made it look pretty easy too, hasn't he? Oh. Sure, and partner's going to be second to the top here. Yes, he's got his way into second. And he's, he's short of the ley line, I think. So the lead is going to be very, very considerable. Quite light. Yandu have a round, and they're looking for a spinnaker. I think they'll probably set. They're in a really soft spot in the lee of Point Piper. Oh, they were well short, Shore and Partners, of the ley yeah. line. Yeah. But tricky here, Pete, like the switcheroo is about 30, 40 degrees, so... And Yandu has set a spinnaker, we'll come to him in a moment, but we'll stick with a battle for second. Shore and Partners tacking now to lay in, there's the mark. Clearly big rig conditions at the top here. Yeah, it's Absolutely. Soft. <coughs> and Shore and Partners will be second. Noakes sailing third, so they're both on big rigs, and then Tech 2. No, no, Pete, sure, so is on second sail. He's second sail, is it? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Wow, that's interesting. Yes. 
Tech 2 is struggling to get round. There's Noakes. He's the first in the big rig. It's short and part. It's a very quick set. Well, they've rolled the dice pretty quickly, and so has Noakes. That's good stuff. Looks quite light. Tech 2 around. And they'll be straight into it. <clears throat> you would think so. And in the distance, Yandu got an early set. They went higher. Now they've got a drop to get round Bradley's head. You can just see them between the two red uh, Tech 2. Yeah, I don't sure think the shoots will be lasting too long here, Pete. Just enough to get away from the windward shore. Yes, because a bit of a More big void coming out off yeah. the western end of Point Piper. You know, if so Noakes had got to the mark in a puff, they would have had a they, the option oh, at least to... Oh, oh there's a capsize here. Michael on the oh, screen. Michael oh. saved. Oh. Half twice. saved. Twice saved at two of the three marks. Yeah, oh, John O. Witty now. He's good day to... The, Burrowing Hotel. Burrowing. Will they tangle up? And, and not much between oh. an anything path. No steerage That's way. It's all happening here. They can become the cavalry. Are they locked up. Oh, no, they're, they're locked all, up, are they? They're all going to get locked up. Burrowing has hit the mark. I'll probably tangle with Fisher Pikel. Lazarus is capsizing. Oh, look, there's Lazarus fabulous action. Lazarus. Oh. Kitchen maker. Kitchen. Oh, everyone's in on it. Dear, oh, this is not the fabulous action for the. View is not fabulous action for the crews or the boats. Oh, oh my goodness! Well, that is a tangle and a half. That is a tangle and a half. A multi-vehicle accident, cool. Yeah, you it? could say how, that. how to make friends and influence people. There's a bit of yelling. It's your fault. No, it wasn't. It was yours. So Lazarus Capital, but uh, the chief's in there, Marcus. He'll sort them all out. Capital. Oh, Marcus. He's, he's, Tangled round. Now, did Burrowing end up going round the no, mark? No, they went uh, below it. Oh, right, going so he's got a little... re-round. No yeah. one's gone round yet. Lazarus oh. is going to come out in front out of that. Well, if you wanted action, that's probably some of the best action we've seen all year. Probably not for any of those crews, but, boy, that, that had everything. Pete, it, the, 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 the thing it didn't <laughs> have... Highlight reels, yes. The thing it didn't have, Pete, was the sound of any broken carbon. Which no, is well, there goes Lazarus, Marcus Ashley Jones, the kitchen maker. Royal Oak, Royal Oak still their, in their trouble. Their own business. They've got two crew in the water. Two crew in the water. Oh, Four dear. Four blokes. Bellmates late coming in. Burrowang getting round. Fisher Pike all struggling. Smeg there. Anyway, that was something. That was something Back to Back onto the see. kitchen maker. Peter will start heading off and seeing what's happening. You wouldn't believe that unless you saw it, but anyway, we did see it. Great work from our camera boys. But meanwhile, meanwhile there's another race. There is a race that has developed between four boats. A huge gap now to fifth is uh, Capital. Lazarus, uh, Lazarus Capital Partners, but they're now, as Andrew predicted, they've all dropped their spinnakers after early sets. Yandu leads in the distance. The short partner's going high. The mark down in Charter Bay. They'll go around that, then back into Rose Bay. So a fairly long beat back up to, to Rose Bay. Short partner's just going to main it, Jim. up to Yandu shortly, and there's Shore and Pubs. Yandu almost at the turning mark in Chowder Bay. Just turned that mark, still with a very, very good lead. There he goes, he's around. All done and dusted. Spinning us for a short time down that reach, but majority of time just made a jib reaching. And a real battle here for, for second. The big sail of Noakes against the two smaller sails of Tech 2 and sure, partners, here's the battle here. 
Chewing pot is trying to suck. Good luck with that. <laughs> Interestingly, Yandu's tacked pretty quickly after getting around that mark and going again. Probably hard right, which was such a successful manoeuvre for him on the first beat, but now Noakes like just got the, yeah, Noakes has got the battle of the second. But yeah. sure apart, as Andrew, as you said, went so high, he's now had to set the shoot to get down. But well, no harm in that, and then no. in, in touch with Tech 2. He'll so. bring him right into these uh, yeah. other two. And Tech 2 is actually quite slow into the mark with the other shoot, so... Yep, you know, bring some imperfections there, but uh, and no sort of running one and a half strings, main and jib to get the last hundred metres into the mark. So that makes Yandu's lead about a minute 25 or something. Wow, it's a really good lead. But this next bit, Pete, a beat and a VMG run. And the nice pressure between Yandu and uh, the weather mark up in Rose Bay at the moment. Very good, steady 12, 12 knots perhaps. And he's hanging in there. Yeah, you know, he's small rig, and crew maybe, working hard. Maybe a little Looks bit great. more, a little cloud street and uh, pressure, good, good, good pressure down at the water level. Yeah. And no spectator interference, so no, there'll be no yelling for John Winnie, you'll be pretty cool with that. And there's a second place Noakes. Tech two tack right at the mark and Shore and Partners in fourth at the moment. But there's Yandu. Looking very, very good. Yeah, as he has all year. Nice medium range at the moment for him. And uh Swear words from our producer about picture in picture, but here we go. Tech two and notes. Now, Andrew, here's a question for you as we look at Yandu. Why does he need such a long tiller extension? Oh, because sometimes one of the other blokes has a steer. <laughs> what an eight foot bloke has a steer. I mean, what he has a, you say, a smallish fellow? Not, yeah. a, not super tall. I think they're to but, suit Aaron when they, they come out of the general box. They're, they're set to suit Aaron Everett's height because he's probably the tallest skipper we've got. And when he pushes one, the tiller all the way away. <laughs> so one size fits all. Correct. Okay, fair enough. And you're allowed to chop the end off, Pete. But, but there's a spare tiller held at the club or two because they, they do often break. They they often, well, they often get walked on. They, you know. Look at that Rick's and oh. he, he's a bit of a lull for these well, boys. Just a ferry went past. Ferry went past. Negotiated. Exactly. Mike Kennedy won't be liking the ins and outs. He likes no. to just stay out there as That's right. veteran, but, veterans do. You know, they kind of got a medium rig set up there without the rig pressed in the boat too hard. You can see from our shot, they've got a bit of head stay sag, which is a positive, and uh, comfortably motoring along here. Traps 40 knots in the path. Gee, it looks a nice setup on that mainsail, doesn't it? Well, it's quite nice deep, you know. Yeah. So nice bit of twist. And the the test the test is can you make that thing work in 22 knots? You know, yeah. what we might term Jack McCartney territory. But uh, you can see they're going up the up the right hand side of the island, not not otherwise. It's just a little soft spot. But just coming into more breeze in a moment. It's, yeah, just good. getting into on the face of it now. A good puff here. It's Point Piper in the distance. Yeah, really good puff. Real second sail breeze there. So they'll go round the weather mark and then run back down to where whence they've just came. As you said, Andrew, a VMG run. Yeah. And you know that it's sort of one of those things that sometimes the. The well, the well sailed boat with a smaller rig can go okay, but if something happens and you've got to do a couple of extra jibes because of the small rig, the jibe cost is quite high. If it's uh, you know marginal second sail, the jibe cost is quite high. So you've got to try and simplify it, minimise the number of jibes to get to the bottom. So the bow of the Yandu pointed at the very famous Royal Prince Edward Yacht Club on the beach 
Yep. Had a few runs there, haven't you, Bucko? At Point Piper. Involuntarily a few times. You then have the 80 uh, footer stream going, no doubt, listening to us talking away about the 80s as they watch every Sunday. It's a terrific vantage spot to watch live and also the stream that we're providing, the Sale Media Production doing this for the Australian 18 Footer League. <laughs> Terrific camera work from the drone and on board our camera cat as a fleet of fin dinghies are racing up between Point Piper and Shark Island. And Yandu just getting in a bit of soft spot. But when she tacks, there's some good pressure. Yeah, She's no, tacking it's... shortly. There he goes, yeah. He's, he's running a... out a bit of pressure. He's got a nice vein here. Very nice line, isn't it? Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Yeah. And the fin dinghies are telling him there's enough wind in Rosebay itself for him. Well, I think in the second or third race of the season, I think in a big sail race, we saw Yandu do this. You know, he extended and extended, got way out in front and had the misfortune to capsize on the spinning run to the finish. And he's doing the same thing with his second rig today, looking back. Second boats are way back now, and he's, he's certainly not uh, yeah. getting the gap closed on him at all. He's very no, comfortable. Noakes and Tech 2 having a fight for second here, Pete, so... Yeah, they've sort of dropped Shoring Partners off, haven't they? Shoring Partners are well off in the distance. But... Yeah. Anyway, we were travelling with Yandu, bouncing along on the face of a beauty. Yeah. And as their old colleague, Killer, did call it, in the navigated the Dardanelles quite well. Yeah. Just laying in towards Shark Island at the totem pole, but they'll, they won't get around that. They'll have to tack. And then still about 300 metres downwind of the, the windward mark. There's Shark Island in the background. Just so ship has uh, a couple of fin dinghies around and about and uh have you any experience of that vessel you in a fin dinghy yeah i've sailed one once and that was sufficient and that probably tells you the story <laughs> that'll be then okay oh, he did get around the totem pole there's the old famous totem pole as we knew it and loved it probably a new addition since we were all trying to get around there and capsizing there but there's yandu really looking strong nice a, nice sharp instrument on the top of the totem pole Many spinnakers torn thereupon. Come to grief there. He's going right out almost as he tacks now. No, they're no, well short of a lay line. Yeah. No, they're doing a good job though, Pete. They're just yep. tacking on the face of each nice. puff. Yep. Going where the wind is. Where the wind is and never tacking a lull. There you go. I told you that before. Yeah. Told you that before. It's uh, where the Mark up in Rose Bay. Those so that Pete, are familiar actually, with Sydney Harbour. A bit yeah. of a yeah. bit of a funny yeah. angle for this run, yeah. Pete. Starboard jibe. Yeah, long starboard, won't it be? You yeah. think? Yeah, exactly. And you know the breeze so far left that uh, not too much time on port, I guess. Anyway, so not too many passing lanes. Correct. But drag race. Yeah, the jive cost might be less in some conditions with the little rig than the big rig. Up range, the big rig's expensive. Down range, the little rig's expensive. We'll soon see the group. Shore partners. There's Tech 2 and Noakes together. Noakes still hanging on grimly to second. Tech 2 throwing the challenge as is Shore a partner. And this is a nice lead to Yandu. As Tech 2 tack on top of Shore and partners. Noakes extending a little bit out in port before he tacks. That's third and fourth as we look at a few fin dinghies in the foreground and 420 I think. 20 ties are fun. Woody a bit overstood on the Port Tech Ley line here, but on the Port Tech Ley line, so. Nice. 
and he's going to exile. No, he's going to jibe set. Okay, that's the right. Yeah, call. that's the go with the breeze in the left. Yeah. Although Spinnaker's on the wrong side, that's might have been right. better shot. No, but they'll handle it. Look at that. Look. Oh, no problem at all. But he did Experience. have trouble with that before. Yes. Pull the sheet on Andrew, and away you go. Look at that. Is that how it works? Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Oh, this, this. this. <laughs> it's waiting for you to see that, Pete. So, Jimmy, can we fire a torpedo at this moment? Just coming into view shortly, we'll see somewhat of an obstruction to the second and third place getters. But meanwhile, there's Yandu running away on uh, starboard. Tech two coming up. Away, downwind. And no script might like the chances here, barring the possibility of the... Of the barge getting in the way. You'd have to say the ugliest boat you've ever seen. It's certainly in the contest. And that's been it? kind of the Someone's designer. Someone's pride, pride and joy. Boat. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that, but got to set himself right up between them and the weather mark. Going to make the uh, jibe set on <laughs> Noakes. Yeah, Noakes has got a two. We're going to have plenty on. Noakes has got a bit of a lead here over Tech Two now. Yes. Not too bad at all. But what happens when they get round the mark? Jibe set, I think. The only manoeuvre they can do. And we'll see Yandu any moment. There he is. That's wow, a lead. That is a lead and a half. Let me tell you. Thick end of two and a bit He's nearly halfway down the, the run, and these boats are still not at the weather mark. Peter, he's not even half of the halfway down the run. Come on, well, by the time they get to the mark, in he'll be halfway. Principle. <laughs> yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. He's, I do. he's got a long lead. Here we go. <laughs> Near Nokes, enough. Noakes coming in. Overstood. I reckon these guys might do a bear away here because it's pretty windy. Yeah, there's some spiky little bits at this weather mark at Rose Bay. Yep. So that's the face of a good puff. Shore partners are coming in on the other side. So you'll see Shore partners come in on starboard in a moment. And Shore partners They'll gonna... be close to Tech 2. Yeah, and they can tack and lay and be in yeah, front of Yeah, there they go. Two. They should tack Shore. No, oh, no. no What's he going to do? No, 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 no. Oh, there they go. Didn't do it. Didn't need to no. do that. Equivocated. No. And then didn't make a decision. Okay, Noakes have jibed. Main. So jibe set. And the battle really is for second. Oh, yeah. What could go wrong Nokes there? Noakes just a getting a thin dinghy to avoid them. Then tech two around. And the aforesaid barge about to get in the way of Noakes. Yes. <laughs> oh, beautiful jibe from tech two. Peter. Marcus is coming over to say good day to the barge as well. Still working uphill on the Lazarus. Yeah. With, his, with his big sail up. Number one rig. <laughs> expect him to use that all year, right? Yes, well, open your mouth. Okay, Tech 2 just struggling a bit to get their shoot set. Shore and Partners um, so off screen at the moment. They did a bear away set. There they go. So, Pete, what we're seeing here now, we have a look at Tech 2 and Noakes. Tech 2 in a lull for a while and having to try and squeeze down. Noakes now semi-detached and gone. So, Noakes now able to focus on gaining time on Yandu. Okay, and there's the, the next group coming up wind, just just to the right of uh, Tech 2 is Smeg. Uh, Dave Gilmore steering, Mike McKenzie in the bow, and on the sheet, Leo Takahashi. Now, Leo's father has just contacted me. He's an old friend from Japan. Robert Fry and Leo is his son, a top class Olympic sailor, sail GP. So Robert, to you we say hello, hope you're well and it's great to see your son, Leo doing so well in the sailing world. So it's a long time since we've seen you Robert but um, we wish you well and hope you're enjoying our coverage as we're watching Tech 2 and uh, Shore and Partners. And Noakes vying out for second, and the leader, as they say in racing parlance, has gone. Yandu is around the Lewin mark. Or is he? Am I looking at the right boat? No, he's not quite. I'm sorry. I was off camera. There was an 18, a 16, 12 foot skip that I. Mixed up with Yandu, but Yandu is running into Bradley's head, sure, to round the mark at Taylor Bay. There's Tech 2, Shark Isle and Lighthouse in the background. Thin port in the background, probably having a day to forget. 
Well, still. they're about half an hour late for the start, so they will be well, having a, a, a day to forget. A day to forget. Yeah. Now. Yeah, do a round Taylor Bay, back to Rose Bay, back down to Robertson Point, just uh, west of the zoo, and then to the finish at Clark Island. But now, great. Pete, if we say parade lap, will that capsize him? Do you think today? Beg your pardon. If we say parade lap for Yandu, do you think that'll <laughs> tip him over? Well, we'd better not say it. No, so <laughs> we, we, we won't then. Okay. It did last time we said it. We've said that a couple of times this year to various boats. So it's all a power boat. Exactly. <laughs> Let's just say he's got a very, very nice lead. He keeps his cool. Yeah. I think. Uh, Tech two just got to say they're in pretty nice shape. And, and getting a bit adventurous, so Pete, two little jibes at the bottom for these guys. So not on screen, but hard mark to lay this one, Pete. Right in the corner of the bay. Two jibes in the last hundred. Have we got Burgers pulse rate with us? <laughs> no, the end it was around. And, and, uh, nice and tidy. Tech Turgis is going across the wake of our big power boat. The ferry in the background will well ahead of both Noakes, who's now in second spot, and Tech 2. They're coming down with some really good pressure, Tech 2 is, which is going to roll up to Noakes, but anyway, back on the leader. Yeah, and the leader round and at full pressure fairly probably, and a good puff coming around the corner of the bay here, right-handed at the moment here. High right. That is right, so when does he go left? Uh, when does he go further right, I guess? He, he's going left at the moment. Wait for his little header to go back, I would think. Little, little soft spot there. You can see down pressure a bit for Noakes. <sighs> he's, he's got plenty to come to the market. Now oh, he's no. got to get him one. Yeah, Good yeah. one, Noakes. This might be a pretty tight job drop for them here uh, on the face of that path. Good test here. And he's had to drop and jibe. Okay, so... Slightly underlaid in the headed, the headed puff. So the jibe drops the most efficient, and what you're seeing here is not the greatest. And he might have been too conservative, but tech two advantage on here. Yes, he's got down across the face, but he's got a lot of work to do. Tech two in a just bit of a puff. Just watch him go. Let's see how these crew go. Very good crew work. So Noak's got a bit chicken winged up there by the yeah. Manly Ferry, and that cost him a bit. And then Tech Two came on the face very, of the park. Very neat and tidy Tech Two there. No, wonderful. And Noak's will be shaking his head about that one. Yeah, where, where did they come from? They're around. Yeah. And the breeze softened again after this puff here. So. And then Shore and Partner still in the hunt for second. So Pete, that red paint is working today for second, third, and fourth. What was your big call just before the start, Bucko? On a certain red boat? On Noakes? Oh, yeah. It's a favourite. Not anymore. See? Put the, put the mocker on him. And we're on Lazarus Capital Partners. They're now in fifth spot. They disentangle themselves from that absolute chaos at the tourney mark at Clark Island. Moderate mayhem only, Pete. Well, no, I think, oh, major, I'll call it major. Oh. Major mayhem. You've got to get out more. <laughs> <laughs> Lazarus just jiving. And uh, rumbling in behind them, Fisher Pikel. John O'Whitty the, on the stick today. Slightly more efficient lay lines for those two guys. Yeah. The so, old story of Sydney Harbour, Peter, a bit, isn't it? Traffic management is an important yes. task. You've got to try and anticipate what will be in front of you in two minutes' time or 90 seconds' time. So Lazarus will go around in fifth. Bishop Michael will be sixth. And then the battle after that is uh, Smeg, Burrowang Hotel, 
kitchen maker and Balmain Slake, all fairly close together. And then a long group, a gap then to the Rag and Famish and the Royal Oak and Noakes Blue. So the fleet this time have gone long, long starboard before they've tacked and now they're all on a long port. And again, there's Kitchen Maker, Smeg, Shoring Partners going up the middle of those two. Staying solid, Andrew, isn't it? It's enough here for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the model suggested it was going to be fairly consistent, but not enough warmth to soften it. See there, Shippo, the tiller extension's the right length for Aaron on screen just yeah, before. Yeah, there he goes. World's tallest man. Approximately. Yeah. Great overhead shot of Shore and Partners. Fabulous drone shot. It's their best race of the year, as I said earlier. Sydney Skyline, Opera House, Harbour Bridge in the background. And the iconic 18-footers in the foreground. Let's have a look at Tech 2 3, can we? Because they've had some work done, I understand, the last week. Jack and his boys might be a fairly demanding customer, one might imagine. Fairly old mainsail, so it's on its kind of third love curve, I guess. So, Andrew, in the introduction, you're talking about sales and new sales. Just uh, explain that a bit further for people that are watching about sale selection and how many new sales they can have. And... Well, there's a date and a sort of four new sales a year type rule in effect. Some exceptions, but but um, great stuff. So but, generally they're yeah. selected in how many sales they can have. Yeah, and over so. Over a period of time. Yeah, and, re and replacement speed. So more or less, you've got a new inventory every two years. And so what the guys have found, in a sense, is that, that they tend to replace the spinnakers more slowly than the working sales. And the gyms, as you can imagine, get a fair old beating. Yeah. Trashing, yeah. Yeah, you know. Well, your mains are good, generally. They just need a, a love curve because they're fully yeah. battened. And... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now you might see in the fleet some three-year-old mainsels and some three-year-old spinnakers, but one-year-old jibs. Sean Partners not the tidiest of tax, but what we've found while well, we're concentrating on Sean Partners and Yandu way in the distance that Noakes went furthest left, um, halfway to Steel Point from the turning mark in Taylor Bay. The others tax short of that, and I think he's lost out a little bit, perhaps. Should have worked all right, but Sean Partners looks like they will cross. Cross in third, yes. See a good clear runway up to the weather mark, very little traffic on the harbour at the moment. The breeze still steady out of the southeast, 12 knots perhaps, plus a bit more. Yeah, there's Noakes going well behind Shore and Partners. So Noakes in fourth, Shore and Partners third, and Tech 2 will be second. Lazarus uh, fifth spot. Quite fresh where Lazarus is now, a good 14 knots. So today in that boat, Kieran Cowan on the main sheet and Cam Gunny in the bow. Kieran, haven't been there too long. So you see would have been battling it out on Friday night, wouldn't they? You are him and yeah, yeah. Bunny Penny and they're battling it out today. Yeah, that's right. Very good race. And the points went to the Yeah, indeed. So for the viewers, um, Capitrion sort of lead up race for 
the Sydney Hobart, uh, the trophy named after some famous ocean racing brothers, Halverson Trophy, three brothers who raced with a great deal of success, a succession of boats, Solvig and Freya being the two most prominent. Back, Pete, which year? Solveig won in 54, and Nitra won in 57, Freya won in 63 and 64 and 65, Solveig won line honours in 53. How am I going? I'd say for All the... that without a nut cap. Well done, Shiva. <laughs> for, for the CYC <laughs> history manager, you're going all right. <laughs> anyway, let's go. 18 foot of sailing. Long way from the ocean here. Nice flat water. Nice breeze. Again, there was around just to the right of screen. Yeah, for the viewers. Right, Jimmy. There, just he, there is. he is. A white spinnaker, a red, famous red and blue oval. On his way down to the final tourney mark and then the beat to the finish. Good pressure. As we see Lazarus going upwind in fifth spot. Tech two now clearly second. So there we are, Andrew, the two smaller rigs. What? Clearly first and second. Yeah, Shaw sure and Partners throwing the hat in could be third as well. So Noakes not going through the water too well today. No, for, what looks him, a... for whatever reason. Yeah. And so and they've been a bit clumsy too. Oh well. New boat coming, Pete. With new tricks, you know. I know they're looking forward to it a lot with you know some a little compliment of new sails as well. So does a new boat necessarily mean new sails? Not necessarily. No. Because the club, of course, owns most of these boats. The fish. John O'Witty, as I said, on Fisher Michael's tiller today, he's done a pretty fair job. Got to re-meet everyone at that top mark. Yeah, he did, he did very well up there. He said, I want to get a mark sure. OK, well, here we go. Yandu on his way to the final turning mark with a very, very substantial lead. And on the face of a beauty with plenty of Eastern and Pete. And yeah, look what's happening to him. Starboard jibe owned at Bradley's. Who would have thought? And there's a... Oh, don't tell me. I'm not going to comment here. Oh. Uh... You'll have to jibe. Well, probably not a bad thing. Memo to captain of the Kokomo. Yeah, get out of the B way. Know your rules. Well, the rule there is overtaking boat must give way. Comes down to coal rigs, bucko. Not so much. Give, no. Yeah, pa power give way to sail. The sail boat is the overtaking boat in that situation. They're both doing similar axes. You think it was overtaking or intersecting? Well, mate, I'm not looking at who's coming from behind me to give way. No. Then the rules. No. OK, but, legal but not polite. We'll put it in that box. Yeah, that's the there first rule should probably, be courtesy. Yes. But anyway, yeah. never is. But anyway, we'll like concentrate Fang, on you. Like Fang's there trying to instruct him to and back Fang's off. And ask him to please leave for well, the, the race car. The problem is the power base doing the same VMG as Woody. But anyway, it's just going to be close to now. being right now. Yeah, they should be OK. And you've got the 12s going to come join the party he, he, from the left of our vantage point. He probably didn't want to be up this high, but the powerboat forced him away. But anyway, there's, he's on port. He's got a gaggle of 12-footers coming across, which he'll clear ahead. John Winnie, also a champion in the 12-foot skips, the Inter-Dominion champion, many times club champion. Walk Loose Club where he learned to sail. Still going out on port. There's Woody just sitting in the back of the boat. Look, it's up for a Saturday, lovely Saturday sail. Very relaxed. Why wouldn't he be? He's done a fantastic job today to keep the fleet at bay and They've just gone round the weather mark. The boats two and three. OK. 
Okay, so... Great shot there of the city. Yep. Great drone shot of yeah, do there. Look at that. Perfection plus. Cruising. Pete, absolutely. Hardly need, hardly need a trapeze belt. Just sit there. Two, hey, two yeah. more jobs. Two yeah. more jobs. Yeah. Look at that, isn't that wonderful? That is great action. So he's just over, under, whichever word you want to use, not quite on the low line. Two little jobs. Probably the, that powerboat may have done him a little favour, actually. Made him jive a whisker early, but he's... No, I doubt it, Pete. It's got him, <laughs> got him not quite down there, but it's... Just riding that no, down he would have nicely. preferred to come in. Probably, yeah. From the, would have liked to come in hot. From the, from the, from the, from the zoo? From the left, he's looking up weird, yeah. But he'll get, they'll do a good job here. Two more jibes, and then they beat to the finish. There he goes. Stand by. Ooh, perfect. Come on, Berger, get her on. And Woody will be unique in the world, a skipper that comes out of the giant facing backwards. Yeah, well, the rest of us, he's teaching them all a lesson, let me tell you. <laughs> Whatever he does, you do it yourself. Yeah, you? But he only does it when he's jiving on a starboard. When he <laughs> jives on a port, he faces forward. Okay, he's standing by. There they go. Perfect. The nice shiny new high speed toy. Nice early drop. Nice bit of breeze to come in with main and chip. Nice flat water looking up into the finishing line now. They can see it and smell it. They've just got to get the job done. Yeah. I mean, Pete, the breeze rotated far enough that it's now east-south-east. Tide line up with the wind. Water's just beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. There they go. So, I don't think we'll even put a clock on this one. No. 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 There is no second, Your Majesty. There's a, there's a race for second on screen. Yep. Yeah. Take two. Going now in front of Noakes, quite clearly. Shore and Partners way, way to the left looking uh, wind going right onto the Bradley's head shore, so a massive split. I think Shore and Partners might be second. Big call. Well, we'll see. How about that? Yandu and the camera cat. Pictures of us taken by us, somehow. <laughs> <coughs> They're second and third. We don't know, down. guys, if they're second and third no, because Shore and Partners is Shore, Shore and the Partners have gone the other side and looks good. Good puff coming to Tech 2 or bringing down to Yandu. Yeah, Tech 2's got to evade the power, oh, boat, which is, he just couldn't be blobbed himself right in the middle of the track. But Tech yeah. 2 will be clear ahead. Yeah. They've, they've got a big advantage over Noakes. Yeah, and I, I think something must have gone wrong on the Noakes because that's a bigger gap by a long way. So, might have been some problem. Here's the cross for second and third. This will be for third because 
Tech 2 is clearly second. This guy's going astern, Jimmy. And this is the cross for third. You can see Tech 2 in the distance in the left. Noakes will have crossed Shore and Partners. That's the battle for third. Yeah, Shore and Partners close, but yes, but not Tech close enough. Noakes will be third. Tech 2 is around in second spot. Top left of screen. Noakes hanging on grimly to third spot. So, Pete, we've got to adjust the wind range calibration for the second rig, OK? Well, you, <laughs> you certainly do for a couple of the boats. I mean, yeah, do it. Yeah. Uh, Tech 2 and Shore and Partners have really shown that what you can do with a third rig downrange, really, you'd probably have to say, but maybe not. Maybe not. Well, I mean, we've learned something today to some degree that 14 knots, perfectly good second sail. And the breeze not as lully because the air's cold today as we might have expected, so. No, still full overcast, so no sun to subdue, subdue anything. Noakes will go around third. Shore and Partners going to get that shoot down, which they do there, fourth. And there's first and second. Great shot there, the two boats. Two of the three that have been the outstanding boats of this year so far. in the background, the yacht Alive, the winner of the 2018 Sydney Hobart race, just going out a shot up here for this year's race. Meanwhile, Yandu and Tech 2. Now about uh, 400 metres from the finishing line at Clark Island. Who's your money on, Andrew? No, that, that's capsized a lot of boats this year, Pete. My mate. I'm going to back you and do. There you go. No, good on you. Good on you. <laughs> but, but you've sunk a few too, mate. <laughs> Be careful. This from Pike just on the screen. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong with that? Can't think of anything. Uh, yeah, they're just shortening up up the middle of the track. Yeah, they're cruising home. Get abused here, Jimmy. <laughs> Actually, it was really nice to me in the park. Very nice. It's always nice in the park. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where I left it. I ran after that. I, oh, gave, yeah. I gave Burger the box for Tuesday yeah. and ran out of there. There you go. When he gets on the water, he can get a little bit, uh, what do we say, feisty? That's why we got the windows put on here, Pete, so we can't hear. Soundproof. Anyway, good on him. What an effort. Combination of Dr. Jekyll and... Captain Bly, Peter, right? Well, the oldest skipper in the fleet just really showing them how to do it. It's a fantastic performance. Nice breeze between Yandu and the finish. There's Clark Island. Finish just to the left of the island as we look. And Pete, as ever, give some points to some of the blokes that help on the technical side. Nick Daly and Michael Carter here on this particular boat. Nick, Nick and Michael are rig and sail designers. Beautiful straight back jib. You know, mainsail on the deep on the deep side of the bottom batten, but nice depth of the second top, the third top batten. And these pictures brought to you by Dylan Clark. Thanks, Dylan. Just about to tack you. Uh, sort of forced into attack in a yeah. sense. Not the best, but not the worst. There's Rag and Famish. New skipper today, Ash Brooklyn. Jack Hildebrand and Harry Hall aboard. It's so Yandu again. It's Come on, old fella, out you get. No. <laughs> uh, slowly, slowly, catch the monkey. <laughs> there you go. No monkey catch on this side of the harbour, uh, Pete. Come uh, on. So, Jimmy, um, the lineup today on the good ship, Shore One Partners. I don't know if they changed around a bit. I'm not sure Lindsay's on the main sheet. He's, I think he's in the bow. He might be, Sean. Last year did did the 
the sheet yeah. um, when he was sailing on there. Sean's, right. um, Sean and Jim have decided this year to take off from doing 18s to concentrate on the 49ers. So yeah. uh, I'm sure he'd be a, a more suitable drop drop in into that position. Yeah. Okay, here's Yandu tacking final tack to the finish to win heat three of the New South Wales State 18 foot championship. This will be a very popular win. So the oldest skipper, I yeah. think the oldest bowman. Yeah, he's not going to get even get out in the wire, would he? Look, just sitting there. <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> Don't overextend yourself. <laughs> One, two, three, now. Well done. So that's a big win. Wow. Very, very good win. Terrific win. Yeah, yeah. So that will give them two, three, and one in the championship so far. And there'll be a, depending where Noakes finish, they'll either be leading or equal first on points. Yeah, Noakes is going to get third. They made, they made a bit of an impression in the tech too, but. Yandu first. Here's the battle for second. Just a gentle cover from Tech 2 on Noakes yes. on the beat here. Yep. Uh, Shore and Partners. Shore and Partners, just well, the right of those two on screen on Port Tack. Yeah. Just in line with the zoo. Wharf. Coming to shot shortly. Yep. So, yeah, Tech 2 just keep his powder dry here, I think, on Noakes. Just nice cover. Shore and Partners crossing behind Noakes in fourth as Tech 2 tacks. Gonna let Noakes go, are they? No, Noakes gonna attack as well. So you think any hope that Noakes had of getting second is probably no, no, gone almost, now. Almost zero. They're probably trying to consolidate their third spot, I think. Yeah. And I think they're on the right side, Pete. They're on the left. Bree's still turning left to some degree, so probably gonna be comfortable, I think. And the breeze fading a bit as well, so. Sure, and partner's not looking too comfortable downrange, in fact. Whereas Tech 2 looking the usual competent selves, mostly. Yen do. Got the boat in the park and packed away by now, I'd say, wouldn't it? They're so far ahead. Two minutes. Yeah, well, that's a massive lead. Minimum margin, but you can have a swim and still... Well, <laughs> still get there. Tech two, Jack McCartney. Charlie White, Lewis Brake, another solid performance. They've been consistent all year. They will be second. The battle will be third. Looks like Shore and Partners might have a chance. A shot at third here. They'll come back on starboard. Tech two, not much pressure here at the finishing line. Here goes Shore and Partners. Oh, Noakes. Not Shore a great, and Partners in a real not, solid lift. Not a great tack, but a big right hander. Yeah, they're gonna, could get Noakes here. But a big header coming. I think Shore and Partners could get third here. Just watch, Pete. Tech two, second, good effort. Yeah, great effort. Yeah, oh, this is exciting for third. Now, Noakes oh. has a bit of an issue here. Not enough drag runway to... That's right. Out, out, Tech out two on starboard. Noakes trying to get up to his lead bow. Shore and Partners. Yeah, Pete. Shore and Partners, sorry. There he goes. Oh, no, Noakes can reach off and beat him here. Yeah, I think he can. Good acceleration with the big oh, no. very Short. close. Oh. No, 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 no. Short, Short partners. partners. Oh. Great effort. Yeah, Shore and Partners third, Noakes fourth. Easily the best result for the year on the Shore and Partners. Easily the best yeah, result. Yeah, without yeah. yeah, so I think Lindsay in the bow and... Um, well, that had today, before today, that had a six and a tenth. Yep. So add a third to that. Sure and Kai on the main shoot, I think. And Noakes will be fourth, so that means after three heats of the state championship, Yandu leads on six points, Noakes will be on seven.
check two on eight. So it's all very close, isn't it? Six, that's, seven, eight. That's good enough. Good enough. Good yeah. enough. And then Lazarus will be next across. She'll be fifth today. Be, be close with Fisher and Pike Hill, just to the yep. right of us. Two boats with big rig, both looking a little bit pressed. <clears throat> and Smeg's, Smeg's come good towards the end. He'll be after these two. I think Lazarus C coming for in, mine. Coming in over Stood Pete too, I think. Anyway, back to the racetrack, Lazarus and Fisher and Pike Hill. Fisher and Pike. Oh, this Marcus. is going to be close too. It's going to be very close. Yeah, and Fisher and Pike can lay the finish. A loose cover from Lazarus. Oh, which Fisher and Pike can they push through? Yeah, they yeah, needed they... need a tagging line in front, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, no, Fisher is going to do it. Fisher Pike yep. is next. So they'll be fifth. So Good effort from John O'Witty. Nice close lay line call and got the job done. Yeah. And. So Lazarus will be sixth and seventh will be Smeg, just up to windward here. Just struggling in light air. David Gilmore, Leo Takahashi and Mike McKenzie. Phil, good McKenzie. effort from those boys. Yeah. Three completely newcomers in the boat. Completely new combination and uh, conservative rig choice and uh, got it around. And it and, uh, looks like Balmain Slake probably be the next boat, I think, Jimmy, are they? Yeah, Balmain Slake, and I think we've got Someone Roll up to Oak, Four Pines, and Burrowang just down off um, Bradley's head or mid channel. But I dare say Balmain Slake will be our next home. And they gave the fleet a minute and a half start or a minute start, Pete. Mm. Did they not? Yep. So unfortunate for them, but uh, the breeze stayed in. It's still. Puffy, it's grey, it's overcast, sort of non-summer's day in Sydney. Quite cool. Unseasonably cool, Peter, not quite cool. Yeah. Anyway, summer will eventually turn up, I'm sure. In winter. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Belmine Slake coming in on port. The other, the, 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 the other tack. Just see if you're listening. See if you're listening. There's the other starboard. Yeah. Finishing on yeah. port, indeed. That's what I said. Yeah. That's what you meant. <laughs> That's what you meant. I knew what you meant, Peter. I was looking, back. looking backwards. Predicting the future. Yeah. Okay, Balmain is next in eighth spot. Both of you blokes have got a fair excuse. You've had minimal sleep yeah. and a <laughs> long, young, long yacht yeah. race. Commitment to the job. The Royal Oak will be ninth. Aaron Everett, John Cooley and Charlie Gundy. That's a decent yacht race, Jimmy. <clears throat> anyway, bloody good. Yeah, well, the day belonged to Yandu. You cannot question that at all. A clear-cut winner by over two minutes, as we've seen the Royal Oak come across, and then I think uh, our old friends in the Burrowang will be next. Pete, there'll be a steward's inquiry, but, but uh, the Noakes boys are looking forward to their new equivalent yacht, shall we say. <laughs> Okay, Royal Oak ninth, and the Burrowing will round the ten out. Yeah. And the Royal Oak big rig, the Burrowing big rig. So, interesting day. Not quite enough holes. The guys able to adapt their little rigs. Got the job done. Well, third heat has been run and won of the 18 footers for the state title. And another day that um, was exciting for a while. Um, the excitement came for the battle for the minor placings after Yandu absolutely stamped his authority on this race today. John Winning and his crew of uh, Jasper Warren and Mike Kennedy did an absolutely fantastic job. They just kept on keeping on. They led at every mark and really, at the end of the day, never looked threatened. And uh, they now lead the championship with placings of two, three and one. Second today was Tech 2, the consistent Jack McCartney and his crew. Shaw and Partners, their best race of the year, really, in third spot. Noakes, consistent as always, in fourth. Fisher and Pykel, fifth. Lazarus, Capital Partners, next. In sixth, Smeg, seventh, with a new crew. Uh, Balmain, Slake, eighth. The Royal Oak, ninth. And Burrowang, tenth.
So another very, very good day. We're back next Sunday on the harbour. Today we sailed in a grey, gloomy, southeasterly breeze of probably anything between 10 to 14, 15 knots. So on behalf of all the boys out here, the sail media team, we, we thank you for watching wherever you are around the world. We know we've had viewers in New Zealand and Japan today, so probably spreading into the UK as well. We thank you for your company. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week on Sydney Harbour. So on behalf of Jimmy Bury, Andrew Buckland, I'm Peter Shipway saying good afternoon from a rather cold and grey Sydney Harbour.